Hey everyone, welcome back. Ready for another deep dive? Always. What are we digging into today? Well, today we're tackling something that's probably on every entrepreneur's mind at some point. Convincing investors. Ah, uh, the age-old struggle. Exactly. And we're dissecting some really interesting insights from this book, How to Convince Investors. Sounds promising. So many books out there promise the moon, but... I know, right? But this one, this one goes deeper. It's less about, you know, the mechanics of the perfect pitch and more about the psychology behind it. Okay, I'm intrigued. What's the angle? Imagine this. You're about to walk into that big investor meeting. You've got your pitch down pat numbers memorized, the whole nine yards, but this book says that's not what really matters. Okay, now you've got me hooked. If it's not the pitch, then what is it? Well, the book throws out a curveball right off the bat. It says, forget perfecting the pitch, focus on being formidable. Formidable. That sounds intense. Right, like something out of a superhero movie. But before you start practicing your best, I'm about to take over the world pose. Yeah, which, let's be honest, we've all done in the mirror at some point. Totally. But seriously, it's not about arrogance. It's about this unwavering belief in your startup, you know, that deep down, you know, this is going to work kind of feeling. Ah, that unshakable confidence. It's tangible, isn't it? Exactly. But how do you actually convey that? I mean, when you're sitting across from a table full of potential investors, how do you actually embody formidable? Think of it this way. How do you explain something that, you know, Absolutely, to be true. Like one plus one equals two. You just state it right. No hesitation. It's that inherent confidence that speaks volumes. It's like you don't even entertain the possibility of being wrong because you just know. Precisely. And that's powerful. Yeah. Because when you truly believe in something, it shows. You know, that reminds me of this one time I tried to wing a presentation. Oh, no, we've all been there. It was a disaster. I hadn't really bought into the project fully, and it just, it all fell apart. I was stumbling over my words. My arguments were weak. I could practically see the doubt in the audience's eyes. And that's what's so fascinating about investors. They can sense that, yeah. you know, even the slightest hint of uncertainty. They can smell BS a mile away. Exactly. Yeah. Whether you're intentionally selling it or not, they pick up on it. And that's the thing. You can't fake this stuff. Trying to convince investors before you've convinced yourself, it's a non-starter. So ditch the smoke and mirrors, build something you truly believe in. Okay, that makes sense. But then the article throws another curveball. It says, the best time to raise money isn't when you need it. It's when you can genuinely convince investors. It's kind of like a catch-22, isn't it? It is. And it's brilliant. Because when you genuinely believe in your startup, you're not just projecting confidence. You're driven to prove why it's a bet worth taking. Yeah. You're constantly questioning, refining, anticipating challenges. Yeah. And that, my friend, is what makes a startup truly investable. So it's not just about passion. It's about backing it up with substance. 100%. And the article makes this great analogy about writing a 10-page paper. Mm. We've all been there, right? Sometimes it's about filling pages, not saying anything meaningful. Oh, totally. Just trying to hit that word count. Exactly. Investors see right through that. They're not looking for a sales pitch. They're evaluating a bet. They want to see that you've done your homework, that you understand your market, that you have a clear vision for the future. It's about painting a picture of a future they want to be a part of. Mm. And that brings us to another gem from the article. It's not just about the idea. It's about the market. Oh, tell me about it. It's so easy to fall in love with your own brilliant idea and forget to ask the most important question. Is there even a market for this? Right. Like, you could have the coolest mousetrap in the world, but... If there are no mice. Exactly. You're out of luck. And the article makes this point using a brilliant example. Microsoft. Microsoft. Okay, I'm listening. Think about it. They weren't always the tech giant they are today. Can you imagine pitching Microsoft back in the 70s? I mean, hindsight is twenty twenty, right? It's easy to look back and see the potential, but back then... Exactly. It probably seemed like a huge risk. But what they understood early on was their position in the burgeoning microcomputer market. They were in the right place at the right time. Exactly. But they also saw that wave coming before a lot of other people did, and they knew how to ride it. That's so key. It's a good reminder that even the most successful startups, there's a certain amount of luck and timing involved. Absolutely. But it's not just blind luck, is it? You have to be able to articulate how your startup is positioned within that larger market. And convince investors that you're not just hoping for a lucky break, you're strategically positioned to capitalize on these market trends. Exactly. And that's something investors are looking for. How does your startup fit into the bigger picture? And how are you poised to ride those waves of change? So you've got a great team, solid product, massive market. 
But then there's that question of competition and, you know, those early rejections. It's like when an investor asks, so who else is investing? And you've just got a stack of no's piling up. How do you handle that? It's tough. It can be tempting to, you know, try to fake it till you make it. Put on a brave face. Exactly. But investors, they can see right through that. They've seen it all before. A hundred times. And remember, they're in the business of assessing risk. So instead of trying to downplay those rejections, the article suggests you actually use them to your advantage. Oh, turn those no's into a positive. Tell me more. Exactly. Don't shy away from them. Address them head on. Explain why an investor might have been hesitant. And more importantly, what you've learned from that experience. So it's like taking those investor objections and turning them into selling points. Exactly. It shows you're not afraid of a challenge, that you're constantly learning and adapting. It shows you're listening to feedback. Exactly. And that you're using it to make your startup even stronger. And you know what? It also demonstrates that you understand what investors are looking for. Remember the Dropbox story? Remind me. Rejected by countless investors, people who just didn't get it. And then Sequoia comes along and the rest is history. It's like that in so many industries, right? Mm -hmm. You need that one person who sees the potential, even when everyone else is shaking their heads. It takes courage to back an idea that goes against the grain. And that's another crucial point from this article. Some of the best investors are the ones who are willing to take risks who are willing to back those unconventional ideas. So much of this comes down to confidence, right? Oh, absolutely. You've got to have that belief in yourself and your vision, but then... You've got to be able to communicate that. Yeah, exactly. Because convincing investors, it all boils down to how well you articulate your vision, right? How do you get them as excited as you are? It's huge. And you know what? The advice the article gives on this is surprisingly simple. Okay. I like simple. Let's hear it. Speak clearly, speak concisely, and use the same language you would to convince yourself. Ooh, I like that. Okay. Because it really puts the emphasis on authenticity, doesn't it? Exactly. Like not trying to sound like some kind of business robot. Right. It's about actually speaking from the heart. It's about cutting through the noise. You right. Know, all the jargon, all the fluff, and just getting to the core of what makes this startup special. So how would you explain this to like someone who's not an investor? Yeah. Imagine you're explaining your business to a colleague. Okay. Someone who gets the industry but maybe isn't familiar with your company specifically. Mm. You wouldn't bombard them with buzzwords, would you? No, 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 no. You'd skip all that. Right. You'd give them the straight talk. Yeah. Clear, concise, compelling. And investors are the same way. They want to see that you understand your business inside and out. They want to hear that passion in your voice when you talk about your vision. There's that word again, vision. And it's not just about having a vision. It's about being able to convey it in a way that makes other people buy in. Absolutely. Yeah. And the article has this great line that I just love. Make the truth good, then just tell it. Ooh, I like that. It's such a good reminder that authenticity and clarity, those are your most potent tools when it comes to winning over investors. So good. So as we're talking about all this, I'm thinking about our listeners right now who are gearing up for their own investor pitches which, by the way, can be so nerve-wracking. Oh, absolutely. High stakes. The pressure is on. But here's the thing, to remember those investors. They're looking for reasons to say yes. They want to be a part of something big. Exactly. So ditch the dog and pony show. Forget trying to be something you're not. Believe in your vision. Back it up with solid reasoning and communicate it with clarity and passion. And most importantly, be yourself. Couldn't have said it better myself. That's okay. such great advice. And for all you deep divers out there, here's something to ponder as you embark on your own investor journeys. What's that one thing that you believe about your startup? Something so core to its DNA that might actually be scaring away these conventional investors. Interesting. Right. Because what if, what if that very thing is actually the thing that attracts the perfect partner for your journey? There you go. Keep diving deep, everyone.